Okay, so Joe, there's so much going on. Let's jump right into it. MAGA's in the House are pushing Trump's agenda and trying to formalize impeachment proceedings against President Biden before the holiday break. I mean, and they're doing so with absolutely no evidence. You think as a result that they can hurt themselves or is it all just continued performative politics to please Trump and the base? Both. Hey, hey, Michael, this is a fucking gift to Biden. Republicans in the House pursuing impeachment, impeachment against Joe Biden is a gift to Joe Biden, period. They're doing it, Michael, as we've talked about, because my party wants it. The base of my former party wants it and Trump is demanding it. Hey, look, this is what they promised. If we give them the House, it's going to be two years of retribution. This impeachment of Biden is the is sort of the focal point of that. I mean, this makes absolutely no sense. First of all, when the Democrats brought impeachment proceeding one and two against Trump, they came with documentary evidence. They came with yeah. testimony from individuals, most of whom were Republicans as well. There is no evidence whatsoever. I sat and I listened to earlier a member of Congress who was talking about these impeachment proceedings and talking about the lack of the evidence that they are relying upon, which they're trying to obtain as a result of the proceedings. So the whole thing is just backwards. And it's not the way that these committees either should or are designed right. to react. You start an impeachment proceeding because you have evidence. You don't start an impeachment proceeding in order to find evidence for the impeachment. I don't understand what they're doing. And look, at the end of the day, the base that we're all referring to, the Republican base that are Trump supporters, amounts to somewhere around 38% of the Republican Party. And we know it's that. Bigger. I think now, it's no, bigger. I think the number is 38% is the base that are diehard Trump supporters. And the one reason I say that is there was a series of journalists that went out to Iowa, as an example, and they were speaking to them. They are technically the base. And they said, I'll tell you, if Nikki Haley or even Ron DeSantis are in the race, I would consider voting for them. This is like the first time that you're beginning to hear stuff like that, the honesty of people that is saying, we're just tired. We're just tired of the performative politics that Donald, the Captain Chaos, brings each and every day to our to our lives. I'm, I'm going to... You're my brother, my younger brother, but I'm going to push you on that, Cohen, Michael. I want you to. I, I think it's bigger, and I'm not going to believe that these Republican base people are going to leave him until I see it. I, I got to see it, because right now I know who gives a damn about polls, right? Nobody's voted. But right now, this isn't a contest. The nomination is his. So I need people to vote to prove that wrong. But to your first point, Michael... You're right. This is not the way Congress is supposed to act. Evidence, and then you move to impeach. But Michael, this is not the way a political party is supposed to act. It's no longer a political party. My former party's a fucking cult. You and I know that. Yep. So all bets are off. Yeah, well, no, bets can't be off. Because when you have bets that are off, you start to see things like what happened um, on Sean Hannity's interview with Donald Trump, where he himself, and I am so, I'm so fucking disgusted, so disgusted, Joe, where people are refusing to listen. Don't listen to Joe Walsh. Don't listen to Michael Cohen. Don't listen to yeah. ABC, NBC, CBS. Don't listen to Newsmax or even Fox. Don't listen to any of us. 
Listen to what Donald is telling you that he's going to do, plain and simple. Nobody else has to say it. He said it on day one. Day one, he is going He is going to become your, your king. I mean, that's really what he wants. He wants to change America's democracy, plain and simple. And the people, you start looking on social media. And look, we all know the, the difference between bots and individuals. These aren't bots. These are actual individuals. The base that you're referring to, they're like, well, that's not what he meant. Oh, really? How the fuck do you know what this idiot, this orange-crusted Mandarin Mussolini, narcissistic sociopath, how do you know what he wants? Because you've spent time with him? You're not listening to what he's saying? You're not listening to what he says he's going to do? Don't take it from Michael Cohen. Fine. I'm, 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 a, I'm a detractor, right? Don't take it from me. Take it from him. Listen to what he's saying. Look at what he's doing. Plain and simple. And yet, there's still members of this Republican base that no matter what, even if Donald says, I'm going to rewrite the Constitution on day one, Oh, that's okay with them. Uh, most of the base, Michael, it's okay with. Not just members of the Republican Party base, most of the base, it's still okay with. Most of the base believes he's the most persecuted person in the history of humanity. They believe that. They tell me that every single day. Hey, Michael, I'm going to ask you a question because you know Trump. I don't. Is he losing it a little upstairs? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I personally have seen a cognitive decline in things that he's saying, um, where he's even forgetting the lies that he's saying. Just the other day, he made a comment which was so detrimental to himself that he yeah. just loses words, he's losing thoughts. I don't know. I saw also him walking on stage, uh, and uh, he was up on the stage, and he had one of his handlers on the ground level basically holding his hand as he was walking to the microphone. And you could see that there was something very off with his left leg. Um, so, you know, I was trying to find out what that was about. I haven't been successful in doing that. But as far as his cognitive skills, look, he is so entrenched into the same lines of bullshit that it's the first yeah. thing that he does. He goes to a wedding and all he's talking about, they stole the election from us. That's all that they did. Quite frankly, we have to get it back. He knows it's like even somebody who mm. has dementia there are things that they say over and over and over again, regardless of the fact that it makes no sense. And that's what they continue to do. So, yeah, I am seeing some – there's yeah. nothing new in any of the things that he's saying right now than what he said a year ago or two years ago or even when he was president. Um, and there's – think about even again the Sean Hannity interview. Kennedy, yeah. who is a major fan of Donald's because oh. he gave him access. He made a lot of money off of Donald, so he'd like to do it again. He gave him not just softball questions, yes. but he tried as hard as he could to keep bringing him back to the right answer, the one that we – Donald, you're not going to, in your presidency – yeah. Try to rewrite yeah. the Constitution, are you, Donald? In the presidency, you're not going to, you know, go after try to become uh, an autocrat, right, and change our democracy into an autocracy, are you? I mean, could you get in the United States of America asking a former president who is the leading right now Republican candidate for the party whether or not, when you become or if you should become president again, that you will not? try to overturn democracy and make America into an autocracy? And could you get a stupider question that you would ask somebody and then to get an answer as stupid as the one that Donald got or gave that doesn't even answer the question? And it's a simple absolutely not. 
I respect democracy. Hey, I respect the Constitution. Well, well, he doesn't. He doesn't understand democracy. He doesn't understand the Constitution, and he doesn't respect it. Michael, you're right. Hannity gave him like 39 chances last night. <laughs> Donald Trump is telling us that he's going to be a dictator if he gets reelected. You know, people give you shit. People give me shit. All of us who scream daily that 2024 is all about saving democracy, this is why we say it. He's telling us what he's going to do. And I had a good friend last night, Michael, say, oh, Joe, fuck off. Trump won't be able to do it. Maybe not. But the point is, he will try. How could you vote for anyone who would try to be a dictator if they're president? Let me he's telling clear. us what he's going to do. Sure, but Joe, let me be clear about something. Even look at the language that you just used. Maybe not. The word maybe implies that even in your mind, that there is a possibility. And remember what he also said, the only people that are going to be working throughout all of Washington, the 15, 1600 people that he needs to bring on as part of the transition team will all be signing what? A loyalty pledge to him. What happens yeah. when you have 15, 1,600 loyalists saying, well, Donald asked me to do it, right? Therefore, I'm going to do it. What if the thing that he's asking you to do is to go to the home of Joe Walsh, kick down the door, bag him, yeah. tag him, and send him to Gitmo, right? What if it's not Joe Walsh? What if it's Mark Zuckerberg? What if it's Elon Musk? What if it's going to be a member of the Supreme Court, all right, who voted to permit his taxes to be released to the Manhattan DA? What if it's going to be a federal court judge who ruled against him? What if it's going to be that judge that sanctioned him and Alina Habadaba Daba Abadaba, right, to turn around and to um, fine them for a million dollars for frivolous lawsuits? What if it's these people? What if it's the average citizen in the United States? And let me tell you, as the first American citizen held by my own country as a political prisoner because I refuse to waive my First Amendment constitutional right, I, Michael Cohen, am uniquely qualified to tell you if Donald says he's going to do something, he will try as hard as possible to figure it out. And he's got enough people around him that will work on trying to figure out how to push the boundaries to the absolute extreme and then over that line in hopes of accomplishing what he wants. So, so everybody listening to us right now needs to understand what you just said and what I just said. I said, maybe if he's president, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe he will become a dictator. I know he will try. But Michael, I said, maybe, because I know this for certain. If Trump is president and he can throw Michael Cohen in prison, he will do it. And there are people behind Michael Cohen that he will do it to as well. That's what's chilling. He's going to try to put his enemies in prison. That, that's it. That's it. There should be no discussion then. We can't vote for him. That's what we need to say all year next year. I mean, just think he's going to replace someone like a Bill Barr, an attorney general, who's more Trumpian. Oh than even Bill Barr, who which is who sucked, by the way, and literally should be before a commission right now explaining everything that he did, why he's getting a pass like from CNN or, you know, Caitlin Collins, everybody, they're all sitting there stroking his fat ass for what? Access, for Michael, what? access. Fuck, fuck them in the access. Who wants access from him? Personally, every time I see his 
fat ass on fucking television. I switched the channels because he has not been welcomed back into polite society yet because all he's done is say, oh, well, I told Donald that he didn't win the election. Fuck you. Nobody needs you to tell us that. You know who told us that? The American people. The Electoral yeah. College told us that. Who cares what you said? Come clean with the shit that you, that you did for him. What's going to happen when you're going to have an even more Trumpian attorney general that's going to turn around and force force things like what they did to me, the unconstitutional remand? What's going to happen when he's going to have an attorney general say, people smashing windows at the Capitol looking to hang Mike Pence or kill Nancy Pelosi, it's not, it's not illegal. It's their, it's their right to protest. What happens then? And then they call off the militia, and the militia stays away. Why? Well, they took a loyalty pledge to him. And now what? I mean, because those are the two elements that you need to turn a democracy into an autocracy. Stifle people's First Amendment rights. Everything is going to be state-run media. Look at Russia. Like, for example, they have their, you know, their um, paper, Pravda, which is all state-run. And then the militia is in the hands of the person who it already, once again, not me, not Joe, Donald saying it. On day one, he's going to rewrite the Constitution as part of that. Rewrite. He wants to confer yeah. 100% of the power of government only to the executive branch. Well, folks, what does that mean? If 100% of the power belongs in the hands of the executive branch, what is he really saying? That is then conferred upon the chief executive, the president of the United States, who is no longer a president. He is emphatically the king, the supreme leader, the monarch, the Fuhrer. And remember what happened in the 30s, right, with, with Adolf Hitler. It started off on a soapbox, and it ended up in a world war. So, and Michael, one more thing needs to be said for everybody listening to us that thinks you and I are smoking something, and, and uh, they don't believe what we're saying about what could happen. Look at 2020. Yep. I mean, three, four, five years ago, did anybody think a sitting American president would lose an election and refuse to leave? I did. And not participate in the peaceful transfer of power and then fucking lead an insurrection to overthrow an election? In 2018, did anybody think that was I did. possible? I did. I said it to the House Oversight Committee. I said when at the House Oversight Committee before the Honorable Rest in Peace Elijah Cummings. In my statement, I said, my biggest fear is if Donald loses the election in 2020, there will never be a peaceful transfer of power. That's word for word in 2018. Right. No, no, no. Did no, anybody Michael, Michael, listen I agree. to me? No. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. And Trump was lying about the election before the election because he was setting the table. I agree with that. But the average American back in 2016, 17, or 18, couldn't fathom that a January 6th could happen. That's all I'm asking yeah. is you couldn't fathom that. So don't tell me, look, we're in uncharted territory here. Don't tell me something's not possible with him. Yep. It is possible. Right. Never, never put off the impossible never. when it comes to Donald. So Joe, even if Jack Smith can prove his case or his case is against Trump, and I'm referring, of course, to the election interference in D.C., as well as the stolen documents over at mar a -Lardo. And by the way, talking about, again, his cognition, he said the other day, they wanted to use the place. They wanted to use yeah. mar a -Lago. But we couldn't because we have very important documents being stored here. Could you imagine this idiot, whether he thought it was a joke or not? Look, I know Trump closely for over a decade, more like 13 years. And I can tell you, in the 13 years, I've never heard him make a joke. It's just not who he is. He's not a funny man, all right? But do you think Republicans will even accept the rulings that come down? And further, will they accept the results of 2024 
if the Republican, if Donald, or right, if he doesn't win? Uh, first on, on the rulings, I think, Michael, if I had to guess, the only ruling we might have before the election is Jack Smith, the January 6th prosecution, which begins in the spring, if that's not delayed. That's the only potential ruling. I think you, you see what that judge down in Florida is doing. That Mar-a-Lago document thing is going to be pushed beyond the election. The Georgia case is going to be pushed beyond the election. So really, it's only Jack Smith's ruling. And here's the deal, Michael. Yeah, he could get convicted for inciting an insurrection, but he'll immediately appeal. And I just don't think that will hurt him politically. Do you think I'm crazy? I don't think you're right. Um, first of all, there's also the district attorney of New York case, which was supposed to start March 24th. And Alvin yeah, Bragg has now I know a lot of people, you know, poo poo, you know, that and yeah. say, hey, yeah, come on. You know, it's campaign finance and it's uh, fraudulent business records. And so. Right. Because Donald should be given different laws than the other people that have been charged, myself included, with the exact same criminal offense. Because he was a former president and because he's Donald Trump, he deserves to be treated differently, i.e. that there are two separate sets of laws. One's for politicians or rich people, and then there's for the rest of us, right? What he did was illegal. Now, can I say that that action is as disgraceful as the stolen documents, top secret documents? Can I say that it's as yeah. disgusting as inciting an insurrection or trying to overturn a free and fair election? No, no, clearly I would be an asshole if I even tried to do that. But instead, I'm just explaining. It is an easy case to prove because it's documentary. Number one. Number two, you have corroborating testimony from a dozen people regarding what took place there. It is a sh open and shut case that carries a prison sentence and not one that he could pardon himself on because it's state. Now, I, I get just, it. Yeah, well, I just don't think it'll hurt him politically. Mm -hmm. I think the only one that could nick him politically is Jack Smith. Um, but even that one, Michael, look... I don't know what you hear, but I again, I, I I'm not like I'm not an expert. I hear to, I hear from voters every day and I've heard from a lot of voters outside of his base that really do believe they're piling on him and he's going to milk that, Michael. He's going to go into 24 as the biggest fucking victim on the planet. And, you know, that's going to resonate with people. I really do think it could. I think it resonates. I worry about that. Yeah, I think it resonates with the, as he likes to call them, the poorly educated and stupid. It does resonate with them. Uh, he has turned himself into the victim of everything, yeah. right? I mean, he's everything. the biggest victim in history. Um, there's nothing that you could do with those people. They're the ones that I always refer to as having four teeth and three brain cells, and there's nothing that can happen. However. There is a very large segment of the GOP, including all of the independents, that if Donald Trump is convicted, that they will not vote for him. If well, there is somebody else that they Michael, could vote for. I still don't believe yeah. Donald gets the nomination. Oh, my God, Michael Cohen, I yeah. will buy you dinner once a month for the rest of your fucking life. Done. You've all I, heard that. I probably shouldn't make that. Bet. Yeah, I wouldn't if I but was look, you. I, I won't. Um, <laughs> look, there are also a lot of voters who hate both parties. They hate the political system. Understood. They know Trump's an asshole. They know Trump's an asshole. They tell me this. But Biden's old and the Democrats are out of touch. And, you know, a lot of these people will vote for the asshole over the, the guy who's out of touch. I, I'm just saying this hear, thing is so not I a hear it very Trump. different. I hear it very, very different. What I'm hearing is, yes, Joe Biden is old. In fact, Joe Biden himself will tell you that he's old. However, he should say that more what, often. what he is also is he's an empathetic human being. The guy is doing great things. 
I don't agree with everything he's doing. I would like to see certain other things, but I am not a one issue voter. And you start to look, it is the best stock market that we've had. It's the lowest unemployment. You have, you know, um, there, I, I, the Affordable Care Act is going to continue. He reduced drug prices. You know, he wanted to get rid of the student debt. Um, that you know, there are so many things that he's trying to do that will make a positive impact upon the bulk of Americans, not the one tenth of one percenters, the guys who have so much fucking money that they're building hundred thousand square foot second, third, and fourth homes. And they're yeah. parking their planes all over the country simply because of the loopholes that give them the right. They don't pay anything in taxes. Under the Biden administration, they want to impose a billionaire's tax. Well, why not? Why not? What else is going to help us to fund the two wars, Ukraine, Russia? What else is going to help us to fund uh, Israel against Hamas? I mean, you know, you can't suck the last dollar out of America so that our roads and that our technology and our schools, everything else is going to suffer as a result. While these folks who are making 20, 30, 50, 200, 300, a billion dollars a year pay nothing in taxes. Zilch. Hey, hey, Michael, I'm avoiding the tax issue for a second because I just want to go back to what you said before. You extolled everything Biden's done, and I agree with a lot of that. But yet, Right now, that guy, Biden, is in the polls tied with a criminal and a traitor who's got 91 felony counts against him. So <laughs> there's a disconnect. Yep. Biden and team Democrats need to do a fucking good job next year. In messaging. Because this thing is not a slam dunk. No, it That's is all not. I'm saying. Democrats, and I've been, I've been saying this about Jamie Harrison with the DNC, they are the worst messengers that's out there. Their messaging Terrible. is horrible. They should they should look to people like Lincoln Project, like Midas Touch. You know, they should look to Michael Cohen and Maya Culpa in order to figure out how to create ads that attack Trump that are legitimate and easy to prove. Fucking Google it and bolster. Like if I was if I was on that team, I the first thing I would say is Joe Biden has the power of the presidency. He has the right within which to do videos out of the Oval Office. And so every single day, he should take 10 minutes out of his day. Hi, I'm Joe Biden, 46th President of the United States of America. Let me tell you what we accomplished today, right? Today, we did X, Y, and Z, right? Unprecedented relief for blah, blah, blah. We are doing this for veterans. We are doing this for, for taxes. We are doing this for climate change. Every single day, there should be something from the Lincoln desk, right? From the desk of Joe Biden. That's what I would do. And, and Michael, uh, don't get mad at me because I'm serious in what I'm about to say. I agree with your idea. Every day for five minutes, that's yep. it. There, there should be Biden out there with a video. But I'll do you one better. And I mean this. He shouldn't do it from the Oval Office or from his desk. He should do it sitting down or laying down on a couch. And he should say, this is my daily pre-nap talk to America. And when I'm done with this four to five minute talk, I'm taking a fucking 45 minute nap because I'm 81 years old and then I'm getting right fucking back at my job. I mean this, Michael. Joe Biden needs to have fun with and embrace his age. I need a fucking nap every day, don't you? Michael, I'm in my, I'm 60. I need a nap every day. Biden needs to have fun with this issue. I love your idea. Call it the pre-nap chat and then take his little nap and then he's doing the job. Funny, right? He should do it in pajamas. I love it. But he should he, do it Michael, in presidential. Don't you, do you think imagine Americans presidential, would love that? Presidential pajamas. That would be funny. Don't right. you think Americans would love that? Uh, some would, of course. Some would. Others would, of course, criticize him, and they would continue to promote the idea he's too old. And so, meanwhile, Donald Trump took naps every fucking day. Second, he would get onto the airplane, right? He would go into the back to his bedroom on the 757, close the door, and go to sleep, 
right? Not the rest of us. There's no place to sleep. But, you know, um, he would. Well, a big Michael, a big part of the problem is the people around Biden don't let him. They don't want him to come out and talk. Yeah. And, and I just think, fuck that. Let yeah, Biden too. be Biden. I totally agree. So let me move on and ask you this, because Liz Cheney is sounding the alarm and has said that our institutions will not hold if Trump is elected for second term and will become an autocracy. By the way, I'm watching on television and I know she's promoting her book and good for her. And I happen to be a fan of what Liz Cheney did. I'm not a fan of hers. I'm a fan of what she did by standing up the same that I am with Adam Kinzinger. But all she's doing is parroting what I've been saying now for over three plus years. So my question to you, do Republicans listen to what Liz Cheney has to say? Because they're certainly not fucking listening to Michael Cohen. No, no. Republicans don't listen to Liz Cheney, period. Forget about that. But Michael, you made the point, man. What, my first reaction to Liz Cheney coming out was, welcome to the fight. Yeah. Where you been? I, I mean, you and me and hundreds of others of us have been out there now yep. for years. And, and uh, welcome to the fight, Liz Cheney. Good for you. I'm glad you're on team democracy. But don't, don't, make, don't, don't make this look like all of a sudden Liz Cheney right. is the only one in the country who's fucking realized our democracy is at stake. Don't, I want to remind you, Michael, Liz Cheney voted for Donald Trump in 2020. Four years of that guy in the White House, Liz Cheney still campaigned and voted for him. The only thing that turned her was January 6th. So welcome to the fight. Right. Now join us. Yeah. But she, too... Republicans don't care about her. They don't like her. Well, uh, understood because he's no longer kissing the ass, you know, the ass of their Fuhrer. And it's really, it's, it's fucking disgraceful. But do you think... When you're, when was... you're a... Rep... Uh-huh. I was just going to say, Michael, when you're a Republican like me or Kinzinger or Cheney, the minute you publicly come out and declare war on him, your future as a Republican is over. And she knows that now. Well, it's been proof positive, right? You, Kinzinger, and you, you yeah. know, and Cheney, you all have that un, you know, unique uh, perspective where it happened to you. Yeah. But you know, what I was saying before about Trump's statements, rewriting the Constitution, I mean, I I I laugh, I chuckle every time that I say it, thinking that this idiot thinks he could possibly rewrite the Constitution with his kofifi words, bigly, beautiful, the greatest. And, and I mean, could you imagine what that Constitution would look like? First of all, he'd probably be writing it in crayon, which is also not something that you know will last the test of time. But I say that because I am truly worried that he will do what he says that he's going to do. He truly believes that he has that right. And if this time he actually has the 15, 1,600 people for the transition team, all loyalists, and he wants to get everyone in the military to sign a loyalty oath to him, this is so fucking crazy. Who has members of the military? Who has their... their um? transition team signing loyalty pledges he certainly wouldn't dictators. do it dictators is right so do you think that the courts and fair judges will ultimately be able to protect us from the lawlessness that donald trump will inflict on us including the maga movement i don't know and michael i wish i could give you a better answer i don't know if our institutions will hold i, I really don't uh, I don't know. Here's Michael. This is what scares me. How did how did Trump lose in 2020? And by the way, Trump barely lost mm -hmm. 55,000 electoral votes in three states or he's president. That was a damn close election. Forget about the popular vote. I'd like to get rid of the Electoral College, but that ain't happening. Trump barely lost. The reason Trump lost is people like Michael Cohen and Joe Walsh locked arms. Two people who disagree on most issues, progressives, Democrats, never Trumpers, conservatives, we all came together, young people, to, to beat him. 
I really worry about that coalition coming together again. Young voters aren't motivated by Biden. I think Biden's been great standing by Israel, but that's pissing off a big part of the Democratic base. I, I worry that his coalition can't hold. So do you think that it's pissing them off that, you know, Biden has been pro-Israel? Or do you think that Trump's statements on a Muslim ban, which will be one of the first things that he said he's going to institute, all right, is going to be a complete and total ban on Muslims coming into this country, including potentially shutting down mosques and forcing universal conversion into Christianity. I mean, this to me, I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck? So, so if you're Muslim, yeah. okay, I understand. You could be a Muslim from Jordan. By the way, without going into deep history and so on, Jordan didn't want the Palestinians. They tried right. it once. It didn't work out well for them at all. Egypt. So the Egypt. So the Muslims from Egypt that are living in America, the Muslims from Jordan that are living in the United States, the Muslims from Saudi Arabia, who doesn't want them either, right? Or even from Iran, the Iranian Muslims that are here who also mm -hmm. don't want the Palestinians. And I'm not saying right or wrong. And there's obviously things that took place in all of these countries with the Palestinians. And I shouldn't even say Palestinians. They were the Hamas. Uh, wing of Palestine. You would rather vote for somebody that wants to ban your religion simply because a terrorist organization crossed the borders of a sovereign nation, took prisoners, murdered, raped, beheaded, tortured. That's who you're really going to stand up for? For that guy? I don't know. So, so, so. So it's only been 59 days. Biden's taking a hit right now because he is so pro-Israel. And mm -hmm. Michael, look, a big part of the truth is your party, the Democratic or not your, the Democratic I've Party been Democrat. is, I know, is divided on Israel. Yep. Let's just, it is what it is. My former party's fucked up on most things, but my former party, for a lot of different reasons, is very pro-Israel. Democrats are divided. So Biden's taking a hit right now. But my hope is, that next year during the campaign, Biden will run an ad that you, like what you just said, and people will focus on this and really take a look at the alternative, Trump. Yeah. Well, look, then now you have the other idiot that's there, um, MAGA Mike Johnson, right, the Speaker of the House. He's releasing all of these January 6th footage, but what they're doing, which I think is, again, disingenuous and it demonstrates a lack of wishful transparency they're blurring out faces in those in that footage so that the DOJ cannot charge rioters with crimes that they have not already been successful in getting how can the GOP how could anybody still say that they are a party of law and order or, or 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 back the blue, right? right. Back the blue, right? Yeah, uh, we stand with uh, the, the blue until yeah, the, the it doesn't put money law. in our coffers. Look, I'm a former Republican. I'm very pro cop. I'm very pro rule of law. I'm. Uh, this is what happens, Michael, when a party becomes a cult. They abandon the shit they believed in, or they said they believed in, in obedience to him. Uh my former party's been more critical over the last two and a half years of the Capitol Hill police officers than they have of the insurrectionists. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right, man. And the same people they, they, that protected them. Yeah, they, they don't back the blue, and, and they're not the party of law and order. And uh, but, 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 but we need fucking Democrats hammering them. I mean, Michael, look how easy it was for Republicans four years ago, to hammer Democrats on defunding the police. Mm -hmm. Bullshit, but they did it. Why the fuck can't Democrats, you know, pound Republicans with this stuff? Because it goes right back to where we started, you know, the conversation. It's poor messaging. They, they got to talk like you talk. 
But by the way, and I'm more than happy to go on tour with them and to say it. What could you possibly here? Let me bring this up then. Because well, since we're talking about MAGA Mike Johnson, Mike Johnson's a fucking white nationalist. Plain and simple. He is. He is a white nationalist who has said, not me again. All I'm doing is repeating what they say. He said that he's not in favor of the separation between church and state. Look it up. He said it. I thought there's a constitution that he takes an oath to protect. So you're telling me, as an American Jew, maybe you're Protestant, maybe you're Lutheran, I, I don't know, right? Maybe you're Muslim, maybe you're Hindu, maybe you're Buddhist. No more. Now you have to be what the country wants you to be. I mean, wasn't he placing his hand on a Bible and saying that he's there to protect the Constitution as the number two guy in the event, God forbid, something happens to the president and the vice president? This guy doesn't believe in the separation between church and state? Hey, hey, Michael, here's what I know about Mike Johnson. I don't know if he's a white nationalist, but I know he's a Christian nationalist. I know he's someone who wants America, as you just said, to be a Christian theocracy. Mike Johnson wants Christianity to be the state religion. But Michael, here's the scarier fucking thing. He speaks for a big part of the Republican Party base. They want that. This is what's got to scare America and wake America up. They want that. They want America. I hear it. Michael, I've heard it every day for the last 9, 10, 11 years. They want this to be a Christian country. That's scary shit. He speaks for them. That's all. Right. But they are not America. That's the crazy thing. They are a section of America. I mean, what if I turned around and I said, you know, I would like, you know, I would like everybody in America to be Jewish. Or what if you end up turning around and you get somebody in who's Muslim and says, I want everybody in America to, I want to turn America into a Muslim nation, right? Or Hindu or Buddhist or whatever it might be. Maybe Scientology, right? I mean, everybody be a uh, fucking Thetan. I mean, for God's sakes, that this is not a joke. You know, no. the whole purpose, what, what America was founded on is the principles of individualism and individual rights. Hence, of course, the Constitution, the greatest document, maybe second to the Ten Commandments, ever written in history. It's why if you go to the National Archives and they show the Constitution, if there was a nuclear war, that document goes a hundred plus feet into the ground, into a vaulted steel brick surrounded by sand, that document will exist for all for all eternity, except of course if the earth cracks in half and floats away, right? Then it will it won't exist. But short of that, the Constitution is the greatest document. That's there. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't interpretations and so on, some of which, unfortunately, get predicated upon Christian nationalism or, you know, some other just form of, you know, ideology of theocracy, uh, like the overturning of Roe versus Wade. I mean, you know, that's supposed to have been part of your constitutional right stripped away. Donald Trump wanting to strip away people's First Amendment constitutional right. You cannot say anything negative. It's no different than, for example, North Korea. It's no different than Russia. What happened in North Korea? Kid takes down a poster of Kim Jong-un. He ends up coming back in a body bag to America. Wasn't even, wasn't even North Korean. Or what about folks like Navalny or this other young uh, journalist that's there? You write yeah. something which is that you know de denigrates Putin or not on Putin's message, and you end up in prison. That's not it's 
That's not democracy. And it's not democracy because it's not laid in the foundation of our constitution. Wanting any religion, wanting America to have a state religion, an official government religion is anathema to America. Michael, you, you nailed it. Our founders wanted to create a country where I could worship whatever God I wanted to worship or not worship any God at all. Right. Period. Uh, and we've done, we've led the world in secularism in, in the good way that we keep government and religion separate. This, all I'm saying is this is scary shit because a lot of my former party has been overtaken by this. Yeah, you know, I would wish that George Carlin, the great comedian, was alive no. right now and having a conversation with MAGA Mike, where there was a one segment I remember George Carlin did when he turned around and he talks about religion. And he says, religion is great. He goes, but think about it. They tell you if you do things that are bad, you go into this really dark, fiery, brimstone place where you will live in agony and discomfort and fire for the rest of eternity, unless you give them money. Yeah. <laughs> then, yeah. then right? so he goes, and all of this is being done because an invisible man who knows all and sees all, said so. That guy's really, he's a, he must be a really nice guy, right? I mean, that he would put one of, his, one of his children into a situation like that where your soul and your, and your mind and your body are in eternal damnation. I mean, I just thought it was an incredibly fun, unless you yeah. pay, unless you give them money, right? I just thought it was very funny. And then if you were able to have him having that conversation with MAGA Mike, who believes in a right uh, in a one religion country, I just I just wish that George Carlin was still here to entertain my request. <laughs> uh, Michael, he was fucking brilliant. He was great. Look, th look, this is we've got two major political parties only. And we're only going to have two major political parties, maybe forever, but for a long time. One of our two major political parties, my former party, has been radicalized. Everybody listening to us, it's been radicalized. And it no longer believes in these basic founding principles of this country. This should be such an easy election in 24 for us to win. But it's going to be close. That's scary. Well, not if you and I can help it, but on the same, same on the same topic, what do you think's the disconnect between quote unquote Christians and Trump? I mean, do they just ignore his criminality as a means to an end, or do they live in an alt news bubble where they don't even realize that he's a criminal? Hey, Michael, what they tell me. What his people, his voters tell me every day, and they've been telling me every day for the past seven years, a variation of this. Joe, throughout history, God has always chosen flawed men, sinners, to do his work. Donald Trump is a, cho he's chosen, ordained by God, and God knows he's flawed, but only a flawed man like that, Joe, could do God's work. And so we believe it's a mystery. And that that's they believe that, Michael. They believe he's chosen as flawed as he is. God chose him. Yeah. And again, those are the same. I hate to call them them, but this is who that's the careful, same. Careful. Careful. It, it's the Be same. Be nice. They're your fellow Americans. It's they're the same rednecks with the 4T3 brain cells that you look know, at you with your deplorables talk. Well, yeah. I mean, look, they they are. And I'm going to tell you the reason why. First of all, you know that I was very involved with the evangelical movement and the creation of the of you know their interest in Trump in the first place.
thanks to someone who I still call my friend and I still still speak to um, on a regular basis, Jerry Falwell Jr. And yeah. I will tell you that it's more there ignoring his criminality as a means to an end. They realize that he's flawed. First of all, with the three wives, that's a, obviously, that's a, that's a no-no in their book. Mm -hmm. On top of that, there's all of the adultering that has come out, the conversation, also no good. And then, you know, the fact that there's so many things that he does, which they are fundamentally opposed to. However, however, what is it that they really wanted out of Donald J. Trump? Not his friendship. Roll overturned. Exactly. It has been their quest for more than the 50 years since Roe was passed that they would have their Heritage Foundation judges put onto the Supreme Court and all of the federal courts, and Donald delivered. It's one of the few promises that he had made to a segment of the American people that he accomplished and he actually- That's because he farmed it out. He had nothing to do with it, exactly. he farmed it out. Exactly, they gave him a list, I was there. It was a big thick list. They went one by one by one. He didn't vet a single one of them. Uh, none of his people did, they just went off the checkbox on who that they thought was done. It was easy work for him. He could take credit for putting 180, 250, whatever federal court judges on the bench and that he was fortunate enough to have three Supreme Court picks. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. that's what they wanted from him. And they got exactly, they don't need him anymore. That's the interesting thing. They don't need him anymore because they already got what they want. And that's the Supreme Court judges. And those Supreme Court judges are there for life, or at least that's what they think, until such time as what? As Donald gets, um, you know, decides that these folks are no longer uh, worth his, um, you know, worth their weight to him. And then he has them bagged and tagged and thrown into Gitmo as well. But speaking about these fucking crazies, right? Let me just jump into Steve Bannon and Cash Patel, who confirmed it's not just rhetoric, something you and I have spent the last 50 minutes talking about. This is not rhetoric. This is not hyperbole. This is Trump. This is Trump's threats of revenge and that they need to be taken as real and legitimate. That if elected, Donald will use the government, all right, to punish his critics across all sectors. And that means you and I. Does that make you nervous? Uh, it scares the fuck out of me. I'm going to, um, we're not, we won't talk about it, but I just want to be on the record on this podcast because I love your podcast. Um, Trump's base, his supporters, I come from the base. They, they are my people and they are, used to be my supporters. I don't think they're bad people. I don't think they're crazy people. I think they're scared, ignorant too often and, and angry people. And Trump fed on that. To your point, Michael, we better take it seriously. Because not just Trump, people who he will surround himself are saying the same fucking thing. We're, we're going to do this. We're going to yank MSNBC off the air. We're going to throw Yankee, Michael Cohen in prison. Not only They're telling Yankee, us this. Yeah, not only are they going to throw MSNBC off the air, he wants to jail the president's CEO and put him in Gitmo. I mean, everybody's going to Gitmo. You know, I mean, it's it's amazing. First of all, I'm not even sure that an American citizen can go, you know, to Gitmo unless they're, they're involved in a treasonous uh, rebellion against America, like if they joined uh, the, uh, you know, ISIS, right? And they attack I don't want to, the, to find out if Americans can go there. Yeah, it's yeah. The, the notion. I mean, that that's all he keeps talking about. I'm going to lock this one up. I'm going to kill um, Joint Chief of Staff Mark Milley. He needs to be executed. You know, Joe Walsh needs to be, you know, hung up uh, by his neck in Madison yeah. Square Garden. This is not a fucking joke. And yeah. anybody that's not taking his rhetoric serious, listen, if you don't want to listen to it again, Michael Cohen or Joe Walsh, how about listen to Steve yeah. Bannon and Cash Patel, two of the most despicable yeah. human beings to walk this planet? And, and 
DeSantis, Nikki Haley, none of these people from the very beginning have called have had the courage to call Trump out on this stuff. Only Chris Christie. And why has haven't some they? Because they know well, but Christie doesn't matter because Republicans hate Christie. He's never had a fucking chance. And and and, and by the way, Chris Christie, if Chris Christie really Seriously, Christy, you don't want Trump to get the nomination? Then get the fuck out of the race. Right. Right. Get, he's taking votes away from Nikki Haley every fucking day. Put your ego aside, Chris Christie. Get out of the race and give it to Nikki Haley. And back her. And back her. And back back her. her. Yeah. So, you know, Joe, you believe, as do I, that Trump is unfit to be president again. And you recently yes. tweeted, and I'm going to quote, the only strategy is to support the Democratic nominee. Only the Democratic nominee can keep Trump out of the White House. Doing anything else helps Trump. So the, the, you still, yeah. you're still a Republican. No, right? I'm, I'm an independent. I left, I'm not a Democrat. I left the Republican Party three years ago. Michael, that that tweet of mine was directed at Liz Cheney, somebody I respect. But excuse me, the the next president is going to be the Democratic nominee or the Republican nominee. That's it. So if you believe Trump's unfit and he's a threat to our democracy, the only thing you should do is support whoever the Democratic nominee is. Don't support a third party candidate and don't run for president yourself. You're all on board with whoever the Democratic nominee is if you really want Trump stopped. Quit fucking around with this. Yeah. So, you know, look, Joe, the hour goes by, unfortunately, too quickly, especially when you and I- Love me do, some Michael yes, Cohen. exactly. So I have one last question for you, and it's a, it's a topic that actually put me into a fight with a friend of mine the other day where I literally told her she needs to shut the fuck up. It, and she's not, she's not related to me. She's just a very close friend. She was there with her significant other. There were three couples there as she was continuing to spew a bunch of bullshit from Fox News. And I had enough. And I said, if you keep spewing this horse shit, right, one of two things, either change the topic or get up at the table and fucking leave the restaurant because I'm not going to sit here and listen. And by the way, it's my reservation. So, you know, you can I, I bring this up because like me, I know that you're pro Israel. But you're also pro-Palestinian, as am I. I have Palestinian friends. And I'm not saying people who weren't born there. I'm talking they were born in Palestine. And they're as close to me as any of my friends. I've known them since 1984. Our kids are all friends. But you're also very much anti-Hamas. How could you not be? That's the whole point I keep trying to make to people. And you do it very, very well. I mean, do most people understand that you can actually support Palestinians. And I'm talking about not the Hamas Palestinians. I'm talking about innocent Palestinians as, <clears throat> and condemn Hamas at the same time. That's, uh, Michael, that's, that's, by the way, you and I just set an indoor record. Um, uh, an indoor record for a, an hour-long podcast, the most F-bombs dropped between oh. the two of us. That's fucking awesome. Michael, if you truly want what's best for the Palestinian people, you should be siding with Israel and you should want Hamas gone. That's it. End of story. If you can't say, as, as, as critical as you want to be of Netanyahu, and I think Bibi should be gone, Me too. as critical as you want to be of Israel, if you want what's best for the Palestinian people, you have to want Hamas gone and you have to side with Israel if you truly want peace. You know, but one of the biggest problems, and it's what I hear from many, many of my um, Jewish friends that side with some of the members of the GOP that are calling for the complete destruction of Gaza, turn it into a parking lot, right? I, I, I can't understand how anybody can think that that's an intelligent statement. What about the innocent ones? Now, I'm not saying that I have the answers. I do not. In fact, I've never been to Israel, and I'm angry at myself for that. I don't oh, understand. I, I know. I don't understand Middle East conflict, and I certainly don't have 
any unique knowledge on how to parcel out Hamas Palestinians from innocent civilian Palestinians. And by the way, there's a subset here. What about the Palestinians that are being terrorized by Hamas and they do what they're told to do, which is to launch rockets out of their kitchen windows headed towards Israel? You know, you got to stand for something. And I blame the Palestinian Authority for their lack of keeping a terrorist organization out of Palestine. That the money that the Palestinian Authority receives annually from the United States and the world, the billions of dollars, doesn't go to helping the Palestinian people. It doesn't go to creating better schools and better hospitals and infrastructure and technology capabilities. They're smart people, the Palestinians. By the way, they're Semites, just like the Jews. We're cousins, for God's sakes, right? I'm sh they're instead, every day it's all about killing the Jews, destroying the state of Israel. You know, but that rhetoric is not from the innocent Palestinians, that's from the Hamas. And there has to be a way to separate it out. And I'm not saying it's easy, nor am I saying that innocent civilians will not be killed. But when you start hearing the numbers of like 20,000 people, 7,500 wow. children, you know, if you're not, how could you say, good, I don't care? You have to care. An innocent life is an innocent life. I don't care what your nationality, your ethnicity, or who, what God you pray to. You have to have some empathy for innocent people. Now, by the way, okay. that, doesn't negate, that doesn't negate the fact that I am pro-Israel. I want the return today of every single one of the hostages right? And those that are not alive, we want their bodies back too, all right? We want, and we want Hamas to pay. That would make me happy, very happy, because it would call an end to the destruction of Gaza and additional lives being lost. I know that's not going to happen, but I can still wish. So, so I'll, I'll end with this. A, you can't believe one single number coming out of Gaza because it's all fed through Hamas. Mm -hmm. But civilians have been killed. Uh, Michael, here's what's going to happen. Israel will destroy and defeat Hamas sooner than people think. And then the hard stuff begins. And the only way there's going to be peace in that region is if the moderate Arab Muslim world comes in and forms a coalition and they temporarily run Gaza. Uh, it's going to be moderate Arabs and Muslims working with Israel to rebuild Gaza. That's the only way you're going to move this ball forward. Yep. Well, yep. Joe, as always, my brother, thank you. Um, thanks for joining me again. Eh, you're right. We may not agree on everything, but at least I think we agree on the main principles of democracy, constitution, life, you know, liberty, pursuit of happiness. And with that, I wish can you all I, the I best, my the brother. And I definitely say I have a happy holiday. Uh, oh, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna piss you off because I never say happy holidays. I'm gonna say Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, whatever to you. But I want to close our conversation saying what I always say to you: Fuck you. Thank you, Michael Cohen, for your courage. I mean that Thank for you. your very public courage these last number of years. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. And I will definitely see you soon.